was not the day for jeans and long sleeves, was it? Definitely not. It is a very humid day today. Yeah. And that leads us on to number one. Problems of humidity. Now, you may think we're talking first world problems and how ridiculous are they living in their sunny resort style lifestyle. But it brings up the problems that you don't really think about. So for example, this year, most people in this area had really bad problems with mold and it really had to be kept on top of. Yeah, it's true. And with the humidity, it's very hard to work in as well. You really need to make sure you take on plenty of liquids and try and stay in the shade as much as possible. But in saying that, I do miss it when we go down to other places. Yeah? Yeah, when we've been to other places, I felt cold because I'm used to that constant humidity now. Anyway, moving swiftly on to number two, as with any um, major city, the prices are very high. So the cost of living is very much higher in those areas. Pricing in general is pretty high in Australia, I guess because we're so far away from everything. And also where wages are so much higher. It does make, mean that when you buy something, whether it be a house or whether it be your food or just anything in, anything in between clothing, it is a much higher price than um, maybe elsewhere in the world. And sometimes even rurally you can pay a bit more because they've had to get things somewhere rural. Going on to number three is going into the ocean at your own risk. There's so much dangerous wildlife in the ocean. You've got the jellyfish, sharks, Maybe even All crocs the... in some areas. Yes. It's funny because we didn't realise how um, dangerous some jellyfish could be. And so you obviously get some that aren't and they just sting and it's horrible. But then you get, I think it's the box jellyfish. Box jellyfish and uh, something, kanjis, made of kanjis or oh, something. I don't know. It's but... the tiniest, tiniest one and it's the most dangerous. But it's not even just the um, the animals. You've got to be careful of the rips as well. If you're not familiar and you don't know what you're doing, you, you really need to find out what you're doing. Unfortunately, we hear lots of times through the year about people get unfortunately losing their lives to the ocean itself. Yeah, and even sometimes experienced, um, experienced surfers and stuff surfers. like that, yeah. Number four, the moment you go out of a city, you are likely to have phone issues or phone signal issues. We have moved half an hour away from major suburbs and we can't get phone signal in our house now. It's not unusual. If you go for a drive away from um, major areas in Australia, it, it's very usual to lose your phone signal. Yeah, it's true. Um, it is true. It is That's true. why I said it. That's <laughs> why many people that live rurally have satellite phones and stuff like that. In case there's an emergency, they're still able to get help. Although the phone signal is great in some areas, it's not great in others. You don't really need to go too far out to lose your phone signal. Yeah, and we found near our house, there's lots and lots of black spots, so you can't get radio phone drops out. And I wouldn't say we're rural. Well, we're not rural, rural. We're only a little bit rural. Yeah, rural, rural. And number five, there is a massive problem here in Australia with skin cancer. Australia does have really high rates of skin cancer and that's understandable because we have really strong sun, really, be, uh, really high UV um, rates. And I mean, it's just such a beautiful place. All you want to do is go to the beach and hang out. But it's, you know, most Australians, I would say, have had some kind of skin cancer cut out. We do go and get checks every year, and I think most Australians do. Um, it's pretty much essential, actually. Yeah, I've actually been caught out a couple of times myself and got quite burnt. You yeah. live and learn, and you just sort out your mistakes. Or you hope you live and learn. I mean, you can really spot a Brit a mile off because... Um, They're bright pink, look like yeah, cold. Yeah, they, they go around red like they do in the UK when the sun, come, sun comes out. But it's very dangerous to do that here. It's really silly. I think when you live here, you tend to try and be in the shade. You don't, you don't really, or I don't really want to go and be in the sun. It's too hot. I generally try and stay out of the sun as much as I can, but unfortunately I work in the sun, so it's very hard to keep out of it. Yeah. So I just make sure I'm wearing hats and just putting lotion on all the time. You'll notice outdoors workers, the tradies or road traffic workers, they wear long sleeves, big hats, 
you know, they're really well sun protected. Personal story here, about five years ago, was it? I had the mole cut out of my stomach. I had a mole on my stomach and anyway um it didn't look nice like it looked like it was a problematic one so that was cut out but luckily it wasn't cancerous it was um three moles that had clumped together and just looked like one right thanks it, yeah you're welcome <laughs> i just thought i'd share that story because it can happen to all of us and it is really important to get those skin checks that if you do end up with some kind of cancer a cancerous mole that you or skin cancer then you get it sorted out very quickly or if you like Maz you get a hat trick of moles and you get rid of it hat -trick. <laughs> <laughs> number six this is a bit of a um is it controversial we're basically dependent on the people around us not to be complete twits because that's not what i um that's not what i initially was going to say but i'm making this family friendly not to be complete twits because yeah because we're very susceptible to things like bushfires and you know and flooding and major events that pe put people's lives at risk so you know you don't want people throwing their cigarette uh, butts out of the window into the bush and starting a fire you don't want people driving through floodwaters and then putting the emergency services at risk there's you're, you're basically very dependent on people doing the right thing there was a fire started on the sunshine coast a couple of years ago um well a few years ago now um by a twit and it pretty much took out so much bush people were evacuated from their home for days and you know luckily no lives no human lives were lost there would have been wildlife lost but it was all because of one per or one or two people yeah so you're very dependent on the people around you not being twins yeah. number seven is the cost of shipping when you look at sending things internationally because you think, oh, I'll buy something that I like from abroad, and that's a very, like, it, it just makes it crazy expensive. Yeah. Our family now, there's family members that send gifts to us for Christmas and birthdays, but they tend to now buy stuff on Australian sites and send that to us rather than stuff that they would buy and then shipping it to us because it's just too much. Yeah, because originally they used to think, oh, we just send that out. It's not a very expensive thing. We just post it out to and those finding they was paying nearly 10 times more than what the thing was just in the shipping yeah i bought um, a family member a box of presents i think about so big a couple of years ago and the shipping cost me 60 bucks we even do it with the uk stuff we won't send stuff from here unless we're going to travel yeah and then we just take it with us number eight the last the final last one <gasps> get ready for it oh. da -da -da -dum. If you are anywhere a little bit more, more rural, you are very much more likely to be further from assistance. And so if you need help, like say you need an ambulance, say you get um, broken down, your vehicle gets broken down, um, you A, might not be able to use phone signal to actually call for help. That's where the satellite phone comes in, that I said about. Yeah, but B, if you are lucky enough to get phone signal, it might take a while to get that assistance that you need. Yeah, sometimes you can sit there for hours on end waiting for someone. So a lot of people say keep spare drink and food in the car. Um, just in case of an emergency. I mean, there are things like the flying doctors and there are, you know, there are obviously things in place to help people as quickly as possible, but it's not like a one or two minute thing that you would end up getting help straight away, which you would expect in a, a major town or suburb. We obviously have only given you eight struggles and there will be a heap more. Drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear about them. Tell us of your struggles, even some stories. We'd love to hear a story. So if you enjoyed this video, take a look at this one.